thanks everybody for joining the session today. I'm so happy to, to talk to you and share with you um, information about restaurant tech for the win and for the future. Uh, thanks to Twin City Startup Week and Beta MN for hosting this awesome uh, event. Uh, welcome, Natasha. Good to see you here. Um, and so I'm, we're going to share some things that we've learned. Uh, my company, Next, has done a lot of work with restaurants uh, during the pandemic. We've worked with about over 50 restaurants in the city of St. Paul, helping them with their digital ordering, delivery, and marketing needs. And so there's a, a wealth of information that we've gleaned from that. Um, we've put together a lot of reports for the community to, to be able to reflect on and learn from. And I want to share with you all here today. Um, one of the things we know is that the restaurants are facing a dual crisis. So we have immediate and ongoing pandemic pressure, pushing down on their customers and revenue. Um, it's a fight. Um, revenues are still down um, from pre-pandemic levels. Some uh, restaurants are seeing uh, resurgence in revenues, but actually since you know the Delta variants hit, we're seeing that pressure again on revenue and on customer behaviors. It's really hard to get a, a handle on. Um, we're seeing restaurants, especially in downtown areas, um, not seeing the customers that they would like to see that are usually associated with businesses that are downtown and in business districts, which of course are a huge part of the economy. We're seeing lots of workforce pressure right now. Obviously, it spans across all industries. It's especially hitting service industries like hospitality and restaurants. You just can't hire enough workers. Um, I was speaking with a restaurant yesterday, Snack Chat Catering, it says we get a, a worker in for two weeks and it seems like they just wanted to get the one check and then they're done. So that loyalty from the work workforce is, just isn't showing up. And then we have supply chain issues, again, impacting all industries. And if you can think about how reliant a restaurant is, uh, especially in this day and age, you know, trying to get a banana in from South America to a restaurant in Minnesota is a, is a big uh, hurdle right now. Not to mention all the supplies you need to keep your restaurant uh, safe and sanitized. <clears throat> restaurants are also facing a crisis to adopt technology um, for what they need to do now and for the future. And so they need this technology to gain more customers. Um, customers are in their homes more. They're not going out as much. Um, they really got to be coaxed into spending time in what could be seen as high risk situations. So gaining those customers and retaining those customers requires technology. And it's really a crisis of adoption for restaurants right now. Uh, work allocation. And so being able to deal with a reduced workforce by allocating work to the staff that you have is a crisis and needs to be dealt with. And then operational efficiency, again, speaking to supply chain, making sure what you have, what you have, you have what you need when you need it and nothing more because you don't have money to spare for ingredients going bad on the shelf. For customers, the future is now. If you're like me, you demand a digitally enabled dining experience. And the thing is, is we have the technology to win those customers. So in our work with restaurants, we've seen vast improvements in communicating and engaging customers using technology and customers are becoming more acclimated to technology and in fact, demanding that experience. And I want you all to sit for a second and just imagine a digitally enabled community. Imagine going into a community and knowing that the, any, with any restaurant in that community, you'll be able to dine effortlessly. You're not gonna be waiting in lines or have surprises when you show up and you know, possibly be exposed longer than you need to. Uh, You'll be able to pick up curbside with ease, you know, get in and out of traffic, have your food come to you when it needs to get there. And you'll, you'll be able to feel safe while you're doing it. I want you to imagine what that looks like and think about how easy that makes your life and how much stress that takes off of your shoulders when it comes down to doing something as basic as getting food for your family. In a late state pandemic world, we know that you cannot win without technology. So we've seen, 90 restaurants, more than 90 restaurants disappear over the last two years in the Twin Cities. And we've especially seen restaurants without the technological capabilities hardest hit. If you can't know that they're open, if you can't know what's on the menu, 
if you can't get the food delivered to your house, if you can't pick it up curbside, how do you get the food? And the restaurants who haven't been able to make that digital uh, transformation have, have met hard times, if not a very, a very uh, sad fate. So what do we want to choose? On one hand, we can choose chainification, food gentrification, and depleted communities. If restaurants aren't, don't have the technology they need to meet what customers want, these are the things that happen. And there's this story that I've been just following, and I think it's crazy um, and interesting because this is what we see restaurants, you know, uh, restaurant chains do. Um, there seems to be uh, a, a nice media campaign going on from Taco Bell. And I just call it the what the heck is this in the first place campaign. And they've uh, kind of spun that into calling this the great crispy chicken sandwich taco debate. Is this a chicken sandwich or is this a chicken taco? And it's actually a question that really doesn't need to be answered because if you go to one of your favorite restaurants, especially like a taqueria or a Mexican restaurant, you'll know that they have tortas there. And we've already answered this question, right? And so our neighborhood restaurants, our community restaurants, they need digital enablement. We need to choose digital ena enablement. They need to choose to be able to serve all customers. And with that choice, we choose to serve a strong community. And I just wanted to put these images up on the page here so you can see this engagement that's happening from Amber Grace's El Gordo. Uh, 232 likes on this post, giving uh, customers all they need to know on how to visit them. And look at this image. I mean, are we gonna do this? Are we gonna do the chicken taco sandwich? Um, we want to fight back against chainification, fight back against food gentrification, and restaurants have the technology to do this. Um, but the struggle now is for restaurants to adopt that technology. I'm Jonathan Banks. I'm the president of Next and a founding partner at the company. Um, there's a little QR code on the screen. So if you want to get in touch with me, just go ahead and scan that. And you'll be able to pull up a calendar and we'll be able to pick out a date and talk one-on-one -on -one in the future. Um, my, my uh, academic background is at the University of Minnesota. I spent a long stint at the United States Federal Reserve. And of course, now I'm the president at Next. At Next, we've worked with uh, companies uh, like you see on the page, municipalities, governments, tech companies, um, and a few others as well, some, some finance and sales companies too. So we get around. And I, I think, as I mentioned, at the St. Paul Restaurant Resiliency Program that we've been doing in partnership with the city of St. Paul, We've helped more than 50 restaurants with digital ordering, delivery, and marketing. So we've been able to glean a lot of knowledge from this activity. We want to win with restaurant technology. So here's how. One thing is, is that customers love prepared meals. We know that we've become homebodies. <laughs> we need a good reason to go out. We love to go out, but we need a good reason to go out. And we know it's safe. And it's that we know is safe and so if we can't find that we're going to be at home most of us like the idea of seeing restaurants in our communities that are from our communities we want to support local businesses we want to eat healthily we want to have these choices to say hey i don't want to cook tonight but i also don't want to eat junk i've got to stay on track with with my health make sure i support my nutrition we're making those decisions at home more and more now and we still want to be able to experience new cuisine you know, we don't want to have the chicken nuggets and the salad every night. Uh, we want to be able to switch it up. And maybe we're just not good cooks in the first place. Uh, you know, I go in and out with that myself. <laughs> some weeks are better than others. Um, some meals are better than others. But we still want to have that experience for new cuisine. So there is technology to help with this. And I have some screenshots up here. And these are prepared meals from chefs in your community. Okay, so when we work in the program, the St. Paul Restaurant Resiliency Program, one thing we say is to the restaurant operators is let's think of some ways to diversify your revenue streams. You know, let's, you know, we're late stage pandemic now, but if, if anything were ever to happen or, hey, maybe we're not as late stage pandemic as we think we are, right? We want to be able to have revenue 
that we can still drive when we can't have people coming through those doors or when people don't want to leave their homes, right? This is where prepared meals open up a great option to keep those restaurants in your community alive and vibrant and also uh, uh, diversify the food that you're eating at home and keep your dinner table vibrant and exciting as well. Another option we wanna talk about is smart marketing for restaurant operators. <clears throat> Let's face it, if you're running a restaurant, you're too busy to learn how to do digital marketing. Uh, you need a team to do that because you need the expertise. Um, and smart marketing for, for operators is one way to do that. One way to automate your marketing and promotions. The website you see here is courtesy of Snapchat Networking Lounge. I, mentioned them just a little bit earlier in the, in the conversation. And the website is produced by a company called Bento Box. Now, <clears throat> at the face of this, this looks like a, a nice website, easy to navigate. You see what's there. You see the order online. It's all there in front of you. So from a customer experience standpoint, this is fantastic. I can go in here. I can see a heck of a lunch deal. I can order that up. I can have it delivered. I can go pick it up curbside. That's great. What you're not seeing though is on the back end and what this does for the operator. So as soon as I go on this website, the operator knows either that we've met before or we haven't met before. They know what other options for restaurants I've looked at. They may be able to know what type of food I've ordered in the past. They, they definitely know what type of food I've ordered at the past if I've ordered for them. This allows the marketer to do remarketing, which means if I go here and I don't buy anything, I might be able to get put on an email list and say, hey, hey, Jonathan, we saw you come on our website. You didn't buy anything. Um, here's a 15% off coupon in your email. Come back and buy something. You know, I'm sure the wording that we will want to send out might be better than that. But at the, <laughs> the crux of it is <clears throat> we didn't make a we didn't uh, convert as a customer at first. But now this restaurant has the ability to do that. And the operator is hands off on all of this. This is what the technology is doing for the operator. Another thing is if we wanna do retargeting, we can have um, the ads for, let's say various items on here, show up in an unconverted customer's um, advertisements on their web browser to drive them back to this website. <clears throat> These are some very sophisticated marketing techniques that the operators need exp expertise to be able to handle. Where if you have a web platform like this one, it takes care of the legwork for you. And of course, hooks to social media, right? What are the top selling items of the month? Push that out to so social media. What are the new items added to the menu? Push new items added to the menu to social media, right? What are some events that are coming up? Push them out to social media. Smart marketing for operators is a great way <clears throat> to win with technology, making sure that customers know who you are before they go and buy that crispy chicken taco sand sandwich. The other thing is customers want smart carryout. So we've all been to the uh, in the situation, I'm sure by now, where we've gone to do uh, you know curbside and we sit outside the restaurant for 20, 25 minutes, 30 minutes, and we begin to wonder what we were thinking about. And you know those microwave burritos at home start thinking, start tasting a lot better. <laughs> um, and so. Customers want to be able to have their carryout ready for them when they arrive. And we're trying to go contactless here. So what good does it do you if you have to go and talk to someone and say, hey, I'm here, I'm in parking spot 45, and can you come bring my food to the car? I'll be waiting in the car, right? That's not very helpful. So there's technology now, like uh, this technology from Swipe By that has geofenced notifications. So as soon as you drive within two blocks of that restaurant, the restaurant will know you're there and they'll get ready to bring your food out to you. Another uh, example of these uh, geofence notifications that is really helpful is they'll tell you when not to show up, right? You know, knowing where the customer is at their office and saying, okay, well, don't leave your office for another 20 minutes because your food won't be ready. It takes you 10 minutes to get here and your food won't be ready for 30, right? So this is really that awesome customer engagement that makes um, the experience all the better and helps restaurants win with technology. Another uh, aspect of some of these technologies is accurate wayfinding. Let's say you are going to get carry out from a restaurant that doesn't have a window to pull up to, or maybe they're located in a mall. 
um, accurate wayfinding can be shown right on the app. It knows where you are, it knows where the restaurant is, and it will bring you there. Um, you want to have this easy ordering experience. Look how easy this is on, on the web page, right? Anybody can go in here, they can heart something and save it for later. They can add it to their ticket and buy it again. And then getting reminders to come back again and again and again. So the win for operators is getting a customer there once. That's a nice win. Getting them there twice is a greater win. Getting them there three times, that's awesome. But a lot of times it drops off after that. What you want to be able to do is stay in the customer's mind um, perpetually, right? So you're always on top of mind for the customer. It doesn't mean they need to eat you, eat, eat your food for you know 10 meals in a row. But what it does mean is that they shouldn't forget about you for 10 months. And so having um, applications like uh, like Swipe by and like Bento Box that we just talked about, and there's so many other technologies that are helpful with this. Um, can make sure that your restaurant stays top of mind for the customers. So here's what I'm going to ask you all to do. I want you to show that you love your restaurant and talk to them about their technology. Just talk to them. I th I'm sure we've all thought about it before. Oh, this website could be better. Oh, this their Instagram is awesome. I love looking at their pictures. Encourage operators to invest here. Ask them, can I order prepare meals for you? Can I re receive smart marketing that's geared towards me? Ask them, can I do smart carryout with you? You know, can we make all these processes better? Because the customers are the number one influence on changing what the operator is going to do in the future. If they hear um, about the technological need from you, is it's a lot. It's a lot better than them hearing about it from me, right? Um, and so, go to your restaurants, show them some love, talk to them about their technology. When you do that, you'll actually be able to reach this vision of entering a community and seeing those people dining effortlessly, you yourself dining effortlessly and picking up curbside and feeling safe while you do it. Again, go talk to your restaurants about tech. You know, if they aren't to this stage yet, put it on them. Say, hey, how can I order prepared meals, receive smart marketing or do smarter carry out with you? Um, They'll love to hear the feedback, and I guarantee you, you'll see improvements um, in technology really quickly with restaurant operators when they hear people like you, hear their customers bringing this to their attention. So uh, I've gone on uh, quite a bit here. I want to thank you all for being on the uh, meeting with me here on Hop In at Twin City Startup Week. Um, there's contact and some contact information for a company here on the page. Um, please do reach out. Um, I would love to. Go ahead, I'm, I'm sharing full screen, so I'm going to click over and see what type of questions we might have in the chat and also see what, um, uh, if anybody wants to come off mute and have a conversation, we can do that too. I'm more than happy to, to talk about you know, some other things that maybe we didn't cover here in the presentation. Oh, great, great question. So um, David, David asks, these are great ideas. Is the cost too much for them? Um, the cost game for restaurants typically boils down to a, a, a various, port, various uh, uh, flavors of revenue share. So um, this is really inherited from the payments processing game. Um, you know, having credit card payments, you know, a certain percentage goes to a credit card company. What you see with most technologies is that a certain percentage goes to you know, the technology provider. Um, sometimes there is a flat fee, flat monthly fee, and, and no, um, and no uh, month and, and no like revenue share happening at all. Um, and what we're seeing right now is a lot of competition around the, that revenue share or those you know, percentage fees off of each transaction. And so you'll see a lot of, you know, down to 1.2% per transaction, sometimes a lot lower than that, sometimes higher. So that's really where you see, um, uh, see the cost coming into play. Um, and this got a lot of conversation during the pandemic because um, we saw, you know, Grubhub, we saw Uber Eats and many others charging 20, you know, 30% 
for delivery, right? And cities like Minneapolis and St. Paul ended up putting a, you know, a, a cap on that to 15%, which is still pretty high. And so what restaurants really needed to do was to start looking at their margins because it came down to cash, it came down to if you have cash on hand. And so that drove more competition around, hey, we got to get these fees down, you know, in the one, 2% area to be able to keep sustaining. Um, and so that's kind of how the money game works on this. Um, if you look at some of those flat fee, like a um, bento box, I believe is a flat fee, and I think it's 250 a month. So that's going to be a lot more than a square space site, a lot less than hiring someone to run your social media and marketing. And that's the niche they're trying to fit in there. Thanks for the question, David. Hey, do we have any other questions out there? I've been known to pick on people, so I'd love to hear, <laughs> hear some more questions pop up. And feel free to come off mute if you'd like. All right, well, I really do appreciate everybody showing up today. Um, I'm just gonna flip back here because I have a slide that has my info on it. So um, do feel free to reach out to me with any questions directly. My cell phone here, my scheduling uh, QR code is there too. Please do uh, contact me. And I really thank you all for showing up today. I'll just keep this open, um, but I'm gonna stop pleading for, uh, <laughs> <laughs> some conversation with you all and I'll, I'll just keep this open here for the remainder of the time and we can uh we can talk more if anybody has has more things to bring up thanks so much I just noticed some questions from Dan, Sanil, and Nalini. Are y'all still out there? I'd love to follow up on those. Cool, cool. Okay. 
So Dan and Sunil are still here. Uh, Dan, your, your question and, and Nalini are still here. Awesome. So Dan, your question came up first. I'm going to need a little bit more context. Uh, I think what you said was ethnic. Can you adapt? Maybe if you can expand on that. I just want to make sure I'm answering the question, right? I, I could take this around. When you say, can you adapt? Uh, I, uh, oh, oh, like translating Chinese menus to English, right? Uh, <clears throat> um, through technology. Um, so uh, there, are, there are multi-language platforms that you can use. Um, I don't know if any of them are doing automatic translation. Um, so it would need to be done. That translation would need to be done. Um, but the fortunate thing about that is if you're, let's say you're, um, you know, I can think about this in St. Paul, we have like a lot of Hmong restaurants in Hmong communities, um, where, um, those, uh, restaurants, you know, will be able to use their same language when community, when communicating, you know, communicate, <clears throat> Dan, what you're saying here is communicating with English as a second language owners and chef and chefs. Are you saying on the behalf of the technology or on the behalf of, uh, of like a consultant like myself? And I suppose I could answer those. I could answer that for both, right? Um, if it's if, if it's the company or a consultant like myself, it's going to be customers that are not in English, you're saying. Okay. So um, I haven't seen this done through the technology yet, but this is a this would be a great advent. So if you could have one menu or, or, or one menu serve multiple languages, that's awesome. I haven't I haven't seen that done yet. If you see anything out there, please let me know first. That would be great. Thanks, Dan. Glad we got to it. Um, <clears throat> next, let's go to Sunil. Can you speak more about smart marketing? How do customers know what their customers are ordering from other sites? So, you know, there's like, basically there's, um, that's just done through uh, cookies like anything else. Um, so if they see you on a, have a cookie in your browser from, um, you know, let's say a, 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 you know, Sam's burger joint, right? And, and they see you browsing there, then they know to target you for burgers, right? So that's basically how that smart marketing works if, you've, if, if you have the cookies in your browser. Um, Nalini, what are my favorite restaurants for technology and food? My favorite restaurants for technology and food, I've got, I go in and out. I work with so many of them. Um, but there's one that I went to re real recently, Sweet Hollow Cafe. Um, and they just have the whole kind of package. Um, they have a patio where there's perfect, like perfect social distancing between the person taking your order and you putting your order in a, a semi-permanent, seems to be permanent um, distance pay location. That's great there. Um, also um, QR code ordering um, and just the whole, this is set in the middle of a neighborhood in a, in a real good setup. So I go to Sweet Hollow Cafe and check that out. It's here in St. Paul. Um, and I'm really loving uh, Amber Grace's El Gordo, what they're doing with their social media right now. Um, they've hired somebody to run that for them. It's a super smart move for them. Um, and it's really effective. I had an example in here. They've got hundreds of people looking at their stuff every day. Um, when it comes down to technology, I think my favorite technology really is the prepared meals technology. I feel like that is something that is kind of like an unsung hero, but something that's needed to say, stay and something new. So those are all my favorites, Nalini. Thanks for asking. Oh, and Nalini, if we're just going for my favorite food restaurant, it has to be Rincon 38 in Minneapolis. <laughs> Rincon 38, check it out. That place is so good. Cool. Well, I appreciate those questions that came in. Uh, let's connect. Enjoy the rest of Twin Cities Startup Week. Thanks, all.